soda. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no water in this. It's common all over the world in tons of different varieties. Ooh, it kind of tingles. <laughs> Tastes like middle school vending machine. Fanta, Fanta, don't you wanna, wanna Fanta, don't you wanna? But did you know that people actually cook with it? Fizzy. This is wild. Because I kind of didn't know that. Who to thunk that? Not me. Today, I am learning about five soda dishes from five different countries. So, let's get this soda story popping. Fizzin', going. Huh? One of those are gonna hit. If soda happens to not be your thing, perhaps coffee is. I would like to thank Trade for sponsoring today's episode. Trade is a specialty marketplace that matches customers with the best coffees from across the United States. Around the United States, they have relationships with dozens of local roasters, so you can always find something that's right for you. And that includes dark to single origins, decaf to espresso, full beans, ground beans, you name it, you can get it. And all their coffees are roasted and shipped within 48 hours, so they always smell amazing. Yum. Ooh. Ooh. Yep, smells amazing. <laughs> This one is something different. This is Brazil Coop Fam with flavors of peanut and cashew brittle praline honey bear meets Teddy Graham. These are full beans because right now I'm into grinding my own beans. Fancy. If you are somebody who makes coffee at home, I highly, highly recommend Trade. It is one of my favorite subscription services that I have ever been a part of because every month I get something different and every month I actually do go through the bag. <laughs> And if you're not sure what type of coffee you want, Trade has made over 435,000 perfect matches to date. And if you don't like it, you can send it back and they will send you another bag for free. I like watching it brew. So it's pretty no risk. And either way, you're getting some coffee. If you're interested in trying Trade out, go to drinktrade.com slash barrel and you will get your first bag free when you subscribe. The link is in my description. Okay, from coffee, let's go to soda. Hi, Hi Beryl. Beryl. My name is Sharon. And my name is Sharon. And we're from Rotterdam, the Netherlands, but our families are originally from Suriname. The dish that we want to talk to you about today is called bakabana, which is translated to fried plantain. Bakabana is a sweet snack where pieces of plantain are dipped in a bag of flour, soda, and a little bit of salt and sugar. Then they're fried in vegetable oil until golden brown. Traditionally, they're eaten with peanut sauce, which you've already made in the previous fries episode, the Dutch Dutch oven sauce. So bakabana is a relatively easy snack to make and you get a lot of different flavors. The combination of the sweet banana, the crispy batter and the nutty and spicy peanut sauce make it super delicious. For us, 7up is really a game changer. It makes the batter super crispy and is definitely an add-on. I've learned when you're not using green plantains, the darker the plantain, the sweeter it will be, much like a typical banana. So I went for a darker plantain here. I did have this one, but it was getting like, I think a little too soft. So we switched. <laughs> and the flavor of the seven does not affect the final taste of the dish. Bakabana has its roots in the Japanese Vietnamese cuisine. The cinnamon in here is optional. I love cinnamon. Do you, how do you, how do you all feel about cinnamon? I also like calling it cinnamon. <laughs> Like when we call Benedict Cumberbatch any other name and you know who he is. Smenedict Cumberlatch, Salamander Binderbatch. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the batch. Snininimin. This batter is getting 7-Up. Fun fact about me, 7-Up used to be my favorite soda in middle school. I was a 7-Up junkie. Haven't had it though in a, a lamb's age, a cow's age, a dog's year. There's something about length with an animal. Oh, tastes like middle school vending machine. Suriname is a country with many different ethnicities, consisting of people with Indian, Maroon, Creole, Japanese, Chinese, and indigenous roots. Fizzy. But I think it's a snack that every Suriname person knows and likes. So bakabana is a relatively easy snack to make, and you get a lot of different flavors. The combination of the sweet banana, the crispy batter, and the nutty and spicy peanut sauce make it super delicious. I think people should try this dish because it's super easy to make and super delicious. Thanks! Bye! 
Who doesn't love a fried plantain? Because I know I do. And a peanut sauce, who doesn't love that? Wow. That is an unexpected combination that is totally delightful. I would have never thought to put plantains and peanut sauce together, but it's working. It's got sweet and spicy crunchiness from the batter. I will say the soda made the batter really fluffy. The batter is so fizzy. I don't know if it mattered which kind of soda. Maybe not Coca-Cola because of color, but the soda is adding a fluffiness that is really delightful. Mmm, this is so much fun. If you're somebody with a deep fryer or not afraid to fry, I would highly recommend trying this. Plus this peanut sauce is really good for noodles, so there's something else to use it for after you've made it. All right, I'm just gonna keep on dipping. I'm double dipping, I have triple dipped, I have quadruple dipped at this point. But in my defense, Leia is allergic to peanuts, so she can't eat it. So the double dipping is my single dipping because this is mine. <laughs> hi, Beryl. Hi, everyone. My name is CJ Balthazar, and I am currently living right now in the Santo Valley, which is at Water, California. So today, the dish that I want to share with everyone is called tinolang tahong. Tinola means broth or soup, and tahong means mussels. Now this is a very popular dish across the Philippines. This is a very comforting soup. And usually when people are sick, we make tinola. So I just bought a knob of ginger, but the recipe here says three fourths of ginger, but ginger comes in a million sizes. So I'm using my heart and I feel like this is a good amount of ginger. Yeah. Oh, one more slice. Nah, floor is fine. She's good. <laughs> now, what makes this dish so unique? It is different from any other seafood soup because you add the Sprite. I used the wrong pot. I need a bigger one because I did not read the recipe the whole way through just now, and I need to add a bunch of water, so. Ta-da! <laughs> It gives it a different flavor, another layer of flavor, in fact. It's always a good idea to clean your muscles. I'm gonna be making more muscle jokes, just be warned. Clean. I have six sisters, four brothers, and I am the youngest. So my mom would make this, and then my oldest sister. I gotta get my muscles pumped now with this fish sauce. That's how I do my muscles. I'm gonna, I'm gonna taste it. We're gonna do like a little, cause fish sauce goes a long way. A little more fish sauce. Oh, better, more fish sauce though. Mm. My mom and my oldest sister were the ones that taught me how to cook. Time for the Sprite, the soda of the soda episode. Oh, whoa, whoa. God, I haven't had Sprite in a while. Okay, half a cup. The Sprite, it gives it a different layer of flavor. Who to thunk that? Not me. You could taste the sweetness and the lemon flavor in the end. This is so special to me because my mom and my sister, they had both passed away. This is a light comfort soup for me. I hope you enjoy. I think this might be my first time having mussels in the non-French style, which is really exciting. I'm a huge fan of mussels. Obviously I tasted the broth a little bit, you have to, but I didn't taste it after the Sprite. And the Sprite has added a surprising like hint of sweetness. You would never think that you put soda in this, but there's like, there's a little something something. The soup be bubbling now. Yum. This was so simple to make. I have to put it down so I can eat my muscles. <sighs> Mm. 
Yum. Sorry for the slurping noises. I know some of you really hate it, but I don't know how else to eat a mussel without slurping. Was that quieter? I am obsessed with the broth. Ooh, that was slurpy. Sorry. <laughs> I think mussels are an entirely underrated seafood because at least in America, they're so cheap and they're so delicious. There's a bit of this dish that still tastes kind of French style because of the tomatoes and the onions and the garlic. The ginger does add a little bit of something something, but I think it's the fish sauce that gives it a more South Asian twist and the Sprite is lending a little bit of fun sweetness to it. I would say 10 out of 10. And this was so simple to make that I will absolutely be making it again and eating the rest of the pot that I have for dinner later because yum. Hello, my name is Autumn. I am from Kentucky in the United States. The dish that I'd like to share with you today is apple dumplings. So if you're not familiar with apple dumplings, it's a big hunk of apple wrapped in crescent rolls, sprinkled with cinnamon sugar, and baked in a wonderful Mountain Dew sauce. Quick question for the apple lovers in the audience. How do we feel about Granny Smith apples? Personally, they're not my first choice when I'm buying apples at the grocery store. However, I respect them because they're bold, but they're not my first choice, I'm sorry. Does water prevent browning in apples or is it just lemon juice? I think maybe I'll do both. I'm gonna do water and I'm gonna do lemon juice. That way there's no way to know. <laughs> to me, it's like a cross between an apple cobbler. Ooh, juicy and like a apple pie. There's something always a little bit scary about opening these because you know they're gonna pop. That wasn't so scary. All right. The memory that I have associated with this recipe is when I first started learning to carry on recipes and traditions of my area. I was blessed to work for the senior citizens department and go and see people every day. And I started talking to them about things that they cooked and ate. And a lady so graciously shared this recipe with me. This was the very first one that I got. Holy poly. It's gonna be snug as a bug in a rug. Kind of gross if it's your rug. <laughs> Ta-da! Dumpling. Way easier than any dumpling I've ever made on the channel. Link to my dumpling episode where I had multiple mental breakdowns. Leia's rolling now. Wow, you're amazing at this. Wow, you really want to feel good about yourself. Make this. <laughs> you have the concentration of a monk. <laughs> and it piqued my interest in cooking and carrying on recipes. The popular sodas in our area would have to be Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. When it comes to this dish, I don't think that the Mountain Dew really comes out like you can tell what it is. The purpose of it in this recipe is to make this sugary, syrupy glaze that you can drizzle over it. Fun fact about Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew was originally the name for hooch. I actually don't think I've ever had Mountain Dew. It's like Sprite if they added an extra cup of sugar. Okay. Ooh, it kind of tingles. <laughs> and it just kind of soaks up in the crescent rolls. But to me, you can't really tell that it's Mountain Dew. I hope you decide to try this recipe and see what you think and share it with somebody that you love. Making this was a journey in confusion between all the butter that I put in. <laughs> How am I gonna get it all in? Oh my God, there's so much butter and the obscene amount of Mountain Dew. So much liquid. However, they look really nice. I also think that these are gonna burn the living daylights out of the inside of my mouth. Seven hours later. It's so good. <laughs> the apple is so soft. It's like eating a mini apple pie. In general, I don't eat Granny Smith apples, but when you cook with them, that 
sourness lends itself really well to all the sweetness that you put into a bake. God, this is, I'm gonna eat the whole dumpling. Oh my God. The top is really crunchy from that sugar that we put on top of it. It is buttery. I don't taste Mountain Dew, but what I am tasting is sweetness. A lot of sweetness. Okay, this is actually beyond my expectations. The apple is just so soft. It's like applesauce soft. If you're looking for a simple dessert to make for a party and you don't want to tell people you put Mountain Dew in it, nobody would know. I don't know if you could make this without the Mountain Dew because I've only ever made it once, but making it with the Mountain Dew, the Dew did it. The Dew Dude. Mmm. It's so green in the green. <laughs> this is the end of the dumpling. That rocked. That rocked my world. That rocked my world. Hi, my name is Oksana and my family is originally from Peru. So the dish that I'm gonna present to you is called arroz árabe. In English, exactly, it means it's sort of similar to pilaf rice, but it also has roasted vermicelli. So in the recipe, Oksana suggests walnuts. Little does she know, obviously, how I feel about walnuts. I don't like walnuts. I think they taste like dust. I dislike walnuts greatly. Go on in, you vials. Let's add the frickin' walnuts. Maybe toasting will make them better. Nah. So instead, I'm using almonds, which I'm okay with almonds. In general, I just don't like nuts, but that is a problem for another day. And it uses Coca-Cola, not anything else, to add some sweetness to the dish and some caramel brown color to the rice when it soaks up the flavor. You can definitely buy vermicelli that's not like in these uh, cape things. I don't know, a spiral. But this is what I found at the store and I figured I can just tear it. So that's what I'm doing, but I'm burning my hands because it's really hot above here. The main thing about the dish is obviously the Coca-Cola. This is too long. What's happened here? but also the toasted vermicelli. It also has raisins and then walnuts is the most common use nut. These raisins are super plump because I let them sit in water overnight. In the picture of the dish, the raisins looked fatty daddy. So mm. I like a plump raisin. I like them when they're like raisiny. And I also do like raisins in my dishes. I don't know how everyone feels about that, but I love a surprise raisin. At least in my family, we use walnuts and have always used walnuts. Personally, I think they're the best. The color mainly comes from the Coca-Cola and this dish is very brown. It might not be that colorful, but it still has a way of balancing textures and flavors. We're cooking our rice in Coca-Cola, the full fat Coca-Cola, not diet. There's no water in this. One for science. And the rest for my homies, the rice. <laughs> I think this goes well with so many other dishes as it is normally a side dish. So we eat this typically for Christmas, dinner, and New Year's Eve. I always look forward to it. It's my favorite dish. It's also the first dish that got me into cooking. Like my sister was the one that taught me how to cook it. Why should people try this? I don't know about you, but I'm obsessed with rice. So if you're obsessed with rice, I think you should try it. It is actually not that hard to make and so versatile. It has helped me realize that I can actually cook. I think anyone can do this dish. Truly Coca-Cola rice, twice as nice because there's raisins in it. <laughs> You can taste that this is a sweeter rice and that's not just because of the raisins. It was shocking that there was no water used to cook this rice. Just two big old cups of Coca-Cola. I'm glad that I hydrated the raisins overnight because they're really juicy and plump and I love- Asha, it's okay. Okay, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
this little monster is barking up a storm. So just have a seat, have a seat. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that I hydrated the raisins. They're a lot plumper. It makes the dish a lot sweeter. The vermicelli noodles, I think are a little too long and that was my fault. I didn't break them up small enough. You can buy smaller vermicelli noodles. I just couldn't find them. I mean, a little bit of long vermicelli. Nobody gets mad about that. Vermicelli's fun. Oh my God, it's everywhere. The vermicelli's everywhere. The almonds are adding a really nice crunch. I think in general, this rice dish is super different than any other rice dish that I have ever had. Not just because of the Coca-Cola, but because of the nuts and the raisins and the vermicelli noodles, it all came together in a really interesting way that I think cooking your rice in soda is not the craziest idea anymore. Hi Beryl, hi everyone. My name is Bianca and I currently live in the UK. I'm originally from Romania and have moved here about six years ago. The dish I want to share with you today is called Prajitura Fanta, which translates to Fanta cake. This is a layered cake and each layer is a bit different. The bottom layer is a cocoa sponge cake, followed by a cream cheese layer and topped with an orange Fanta jelly layer. I'm just a baker now. I've made so many bakes on this channel that I'm not even intimidated that I'm making like a triple layer sponge jelly cake with Fanta. <laughs> I'm not intimidated. The sponge cake tends to be quite dry on its own, but once left in the fridge overnight, it borrows flavor and moisture from the cheese and the jelly, and it all combines in a fresh tasting cake. Okay. And the cake is made with simple ingredients used in a creative way. The thing I like most about it is that it's not too sweet and the textures combine well to make for a very tasty bite. The cake is quite common across Romania, and actually I think similar cakes can be found across the entire Eastern Europe. Romania was quite a close country before the fall of communism. I have never made jelly before. I feel like every time I take on a new cake, I keep adding levels of complexity where today I'm making an egg sponge with a cream layer and a jelly layer on top. <laughs> who do I think I am? I do think though that I'm someone who's about to crack open this Fanta to make a jelly. I think the only Fanta I've ever had is grape Fanta. It's got an orange kick to it. Honestly, that's actually not that bad. <sighs> Fanta, Fanta, don't you wanna, wanna Fanta, don't you wanna? <laughs> and people did not always have access to imported goods, such as oranges and soda. So this makes the cake feel special and fancy. Growing up in my family, we would not have soda every day. It was only reserved for special occasions and celebrations. The recipe wanted me to do the cornstarch into the pot, but like I have dealt with cornstarch and it is spooky when you do it like that. So I'm just making a slurry with the Fanta from in there and then I will pour it to combine it. The custom was to buy Coca-Cola, orange Fanta and Sprite. I remember a fun game for us kids was to combine all of them and compare the taste and color of the results as if it was a scientific experiment. From a taste and texture perspective, the soda serves to freshen up the cake. I think nowadays people have changed the recipe a bit to use fresh orange juice instead of soda, but the recipe I remember from childhood used orange Fanta. You gotta do the lick test. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. The jelly layer only has ingredients that preserve and enhance the taste of orange Fanta. It's Fanta jelly time. Okay. So the soda here is not a cog in the machine, but rather it's the star ingredient. You can definitely tell from the finished cake that orange Fanta was used. This is a very nostalgic cake for me as it reminds me of family gatherings and celebrations that took place when I was little. Okay, it is day two. This has been in the fridge overnight. Now we're gonna see how it turned out. The jelly is, uh, it's pretty hard, so. Fingers crossed. Dun, 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 dun. How's that? <laughs> Yo. Oh Yo. my God. 
That looks pretty Yo, the good. The layers are really flat. One, two, three. I mean, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> On such occasions, cakes would normally be baked in big oven trays and they weren't as tall as they are today. They are cut in small pieces, so you could have a bit of everything. You should try Fanta cake because it's a very inexpensive cake. It's fresh, perfect for the summer and a crowd pleaser. Not to mention, it's quite fun to make. The layers turned out. Like, I think that this does look like the photo. I am so curious as to what this is going to taste like though. The Fanta jelly with the chocolate and the cream. That's actually pretty darn good. The Fanta jelly actually does taste like Fanta and the consistency of it is not jelly so much as like just gelatinous. It's like a creamy frosting and the mixture inside of that cream cheese that I did is really, really good and the sponge is really good. I feel like the more I bake, I keep choosing more and more complicated bakes. Like this three layer cake, I did not think I could pull off, but I did pull it off and I am surprised how much I like this. I can see why this is a cake that I think most anybody would enjoy. And I think the surprising use of soda makes it just like a little more exciting because you serve this cake to someone and you'd be like, what do you think? Guess what the secret ingredient is, go on, guess it. That's at least what I would do. And then I'd be like, it's Fanta. <laughs> I'm really into this middle layer though with the cream cheese. It reminds me of a cheesecake and the cheesecake with the chocolate is really good. If you're somebody who doesn't like orange and chocolate together, this will not be your bag. But if you do like that flavor, I think it's worth trying. It wasn't that difficult to make. I am, well, maybe I'm not an amateur baker anymore, but I'm not an amazing baker and look how it turned out. And the ingredients were simple. The sponge was simple, the middle was simple, and the Fanta jelly was simple. I'm surprised, I'm delighted, and I'm impressed with myself. I think this episode really made me think differently about soda. I, it also did remind me that I made a Coca-Cola braised chicken wing in my chicken wings episode. I'm gonna link that in the description if you wanna check it out. That's a great episode, by the way, if you like chicken wings. But we tried a lot of sodas, we tried a lot of foods. Double thumbs up. This was a fun and interesting week of cooking for me. Until next week, I'm leaving you with two other episodes, my birthday episode, because I also made a really impressive cake in it, which you should see and applaud me for. And I'm leaving you with my banana episode, which is a bit old school, but really, really fun. Until then, I will see you all next week.